it's time for the Doug Garrison Show. This week, Tom Baldini of the Marquette Charter Commission is here to talk about the proposed city charter as well as other ballot issues. Mike McHaney of the Alger County Hemp Coalition discusses the issues surrounding medical marijuana in Michigan. And Renee Prusi is the subject of our segment called People of Interest. That sounds interesting. Stick around, the Doug Garrison Show starts now. Tell the host two minutes. Stand by live to tape. Lighting to show level, please. Confirm front of house sound, PFL. Roll tape on masters, channel to places. All right, let's clear the set. Cue John music, open stage mics. Stand by effects, stand by CG. Stand by to open up three, two. All right, folks, let's have a good show. Stand by, roll it in. Welcome to the Doug Garrison Show, and thank you for joining us at home on Charter Channel 12 and on Fox UP. Well, did you watch the presidential debate on Monday night? <laughs> Neither did I. But let me tell you what I did do. I had a couple of bittersweet events this last weekend. I went to the last uh, outdoor uh, music uh, event at Flanagan's. It was the last weekend under the tent. I saw Biscuit Miller in the mix, a great blues band. I'm becoming a real blues fan. And then Saturday, I golfed on Gray Walls for the last time. Gray Walls is closing for the season. Uh, had a wonderful day, beautiful out there in the fall. Just to let you know, the Heritage Course at Marquette's still open. If you're into fall golf, it's a great time to go. Course is in great shape, and they got some uh, good uh, fall rates for you. Uh, we've got a good show coming up for you. We're going to talk about some political issues, some social issues, and we have a person of interest that I'm sure you're going to want to meet. So stick around. We'll be right back after this. The Better Buildings for Michigan program has been extended for North Marquette residents. I was introduced to the program last year when it was started in South Marquette. Well, their very first visit, they brought in some uh, gray foaming to cover the pipes for the hot water tank, put some water saver adapters on the faucets, and they recommended what windows should be replaced. Very happy to have them do what they did. To take part in the Better Building for Michigan programs, contact the Superior Watershed Partnership. Guess what? You can get any new or used car finance in the Marquette Community Federal Credit Union for 3.9% APR. New or used. Got your eye on this new Escalade? 3.9%. How about this 75 Gremlin? 3.9%. Looking at this stylish Dodge Dart? 3.9%. How about a new Chevy Cruze? 3.9%. RV, boat, tractor? 3.9%. What about this DeLorean Time Machine? 3.9%. 3.9% auto loans new and used at the Marquette Community Federal Credit Union. Stop in and apply today. For all those unexpected dents and dings, call Superior Collision. All right. Well, in case you didn't notice, we have an election coming up on November 6th. You probably did notice that with all the ads and talk. And uh, with us today is Tom Baldini. Uh, you tell me you're teaching at Northern these days. Yes. Uh, but you're also uh, vice chair of the Marquette uh, City Charter Commission, the Correct. group that's rewriting, coming up with a new charter for the city of Marquette. We had Bob Kulishek on earlier to kind of encourage people to come to some of the meetings for that, but mm -hmm. apparently you've got it written. You're all set to present it. Uh, in fact, you somewhat have presented it to the city. It's available mm -hmm. for, for viewing and reading at a couple different locations, uh, you said. Peter White Library, mm -hmm. the city... Uh, clerk's office or online on the we city uh, website city website yeah. you can pick up a copy yeah. or, or review it there. how long is it is it 53 54 pages <laughs> okay well we'll have to set some time aside for that <laughs> uh, i guess my question is uh when people are considering whether to vote for this or not and if if they get a chance to read it great they'll have a better idea but but are there some substantive changes any radical changes from the way the charter was written before and what should they be looking for uh, what what we believe we've done in this in this charter is first of all we haven't changed the structure of the city we still have a a strong city manager we have a, what is called a weak mayor form of government we don't have wards we still elect people uh, citywide what we've done however the previous charter was 1951. Yeah. Our fiscal year was different than the federal and the state. The monetary restrictions were very low 
and, and things of that nature. So what we've done is we've changed this charter to really modernize it, to reflect the new methods of communication, the new ethics pr uh, procedures, sure. a new fiscal year, uh, establishment of a strategic plan for the city, an uh, economic development plan for the city, things of that nature. And uh, we, we give some of the responsibility to our elected officials. I yeah. mean, we have just taken away everything. We still elect the city commission. They're going to have some responsibilities uh, for this charter. Good. The governor reviewed it. The attorney general reviewed it and said, yes, it meets all of the appropriate state laws and things of that nature. And obviously, uh, citizens of Marquette can review it as well yes. and check it out and take a look. Uh, you know, we, I notice online, again, you go to this, the uh, city website, you can see who was on the, on the commission to rewrite it. Uh, basically, from as a voter standpoint, I look at who's on that group and say I trust what they're doing. They're just trying to clean this up, modernize it, because like you say, it's from 1951. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to vote for it. I, like I say, I trust what you guys have done. Yeah. Now, you had one concern, and I'm going to hold up a chart here. This is yeah. a, a, a copy of the ballot uh, that, that city, people in the city of Marquette are going to see. And your concern was that uh, this, this, the last proposal on the ballot is for this city charter, and it comes after all the state proposals, which... Some people have already made up their mind how they're going to vote. Yes. So they need to be aware. Right down here in the lower right-hand corner, the last thing they're going to see out of, what, 39 different things to vote on mm -hmm. is this city charter. Yes. Well, what, what should be noted is that we had nine members on the city charter that were elected by the people. We agreed that this is a good charter. We like it. We want people to vote yes on it. However, our concern is that with the six proposals for the state, and some people are saying just vote no on yeah. everything. Yeah. Well, we're at the bottom, yeah. and we're concerned that people will say, well, let's just vote no on everything, yeah. and we are the last item in the city of Marquette on the ballot, and we don't want people to do that. Now, if you want to vote no, that's your Go right, ahead. but do it because you made a conscious decision to do that. Yeah, okay. Yeah, okay? That, that's a good point. <laughs> Make sure you look at that ballot. That's the last thing mm -hmm. on there. Okay, I'm going to put a little bait and switch on you. I told you we'd talk about that, but I also want to talk about some other things while you're here, basically those proposals. Those are some big things on this ballot right now, the six proposals for the state. And I just want to take a couple seconds on each one because I need a little clarification. I think you know a lot about these things. My problem is uh, I think I'm an intelligent person, but when I read something, I believe what I read. The last thing I read is what I believe. Uh, so uh, that's one of the problems I have. But I want to talk about the proposals. The first one is the emergency manager law. Uh, you indicated that I said we already have one. But, but this one basically gives the emergency manager more power. Yes. The, this is, of the six proposals, this is not a constitutional amendment. The state of Michigan passed a law giving the emergency manager new, more powerful authority. And a number of people said, we don't like that. And so they went and got a significant number of signatures, in effect, saying, we, the citizens, uh, are saying we don't want this law so that it's a referendum yeah okay. and so it's now on the ballot the people will decide if the people vote on this one yeah. it you know then it, it's no longer law whatever they want yeah mm -hmm. okay um, the collective bargaining uh, uh, in the state constitution again this is something that we're concerned with putting it in the state constitution and also this is proposal number two the idea being that uh, that unions would lose their ability to, to collective uh, bargain collectively well, I, I think where this is, comes out of is because what we've seen in Wisconsin, our next door neighbor, what you've seen in other states like uh, Ohio, uh, I think Florida, yeah. uh, where there's been an attempt to reduce, take away some of the ability to bargain collectively, especially for public employees and also in some states even for other employees. So the groups in Michigan got together and said, hey, wait, we, we don't want to lose that protection. So we're going to ask to put this in the Constitution to protect our right to bargain collectively, uh, which is, you know, Michigan is one of those states that this has been done for many, many years. Okay. Number three is the renewable energy. Uh, a date down the road, 2025, I believe, 25% of our energy coming from renewable sources. Again, a lot of people favor that, but they don't, don't want it in the Constitution. So that's kind of the issue here. Well, the, the Constitution, or this proposal says, by 2025, 25% of your energy must come from renewable sources, yeah. of which is defined as wind, uh, solar, solar uh, hydro, hydro or biomass, yeah. okay? And uh, the, the, the point here is that some people contend that this will really produce jobs because you're going to have to do this. Other people are contending 
that it will raise the cost of energy because of, of, of mandating this. Sure. There's two sides to every coin, as, as usual. The collective bargaining for home care workers, I'm just going to go through this because we're running out of time here. That one looks like we're trying to give some people some union rights that I'm not sure if I agree with, but you want to take a look at that one. Proposal 5, uh, limit enactment of new taxes in the state constitution. Uh, it looks like that's tying the hands of our, our elected officials. Right. What this one does, it says if you're going to raise taxes, you need a two-thirds vote of the legislature, which means, in effect, you're giving the authority to one-third. Right. So, okay, so it's minority we rule. We just would like a majority yeah. rule there. Yeah. And finally, the Proposal 6, that's the bridge uh, issue. Uh, Matty Maroon owns the Ambassador Bridge, doesn't want to see the state build a bridge, so he says let's let the people vote on it. That's right. The he there. says if you're going to build a bridge, an international bridge, you have to have a vote of the people to yeah. do that. Yeah. And, uh, Isn't that why we elect our officials to make I, those decisions? I, I'm a person who believes in okay. representative okay. democracy. Yes. <laughs> okay, great. Well, these are all important issues as well as the city charter. Remember, it's the last one on the ballot. If you want to vote for that charter, make sure you look at that and, and vote yes if that's what you so desire. Uh, Tom, thank you very much for coming in. I uh, appreciate you. your thank insight you on your... all these things. And uh, we all have got some important decisions to make on November 6th, and hopefully our people are a little more educated. Thank you very much. All right, stick around. We come back. Some other social issues we're going to talk about. Don't go away. Riverside of Marquette wants you back to school, back in the woods, or back home for the weekend in a new pre-owned car or truck. And to do it, we're going to give you a $500 Visa gift card. Their lot is busting with late model local trade-ins, many with over 30 MPGs, payments as low as $89 a month, financing from 1.9%. With well over 600 to choose from, why would you go anywhere else? Riverside Auto Mall of Marquette. It's a sweet sound, turning the key in the lock of your new home. If you're house hunting or building this year, come in and talk to us about pre-qualifying for a mortgage at Peninsula Bank. While mortgage rates remain historically low, pre-qualified buyers are ready to make an offer when you find your dream home or property. Pick up a loan application at any Penn Bank office or drive through We're happy to assist you in completing the application. Peninsula Bank is an equal housing lender and member FDIC. The Doug Garrison Show is brought to you in part by Iron Bay Computer and Design. Iron Bay gives you the quality and service you demand. And by Reflections Hair Salon, featuring professional stylists, a family-friendly atmosphere, and prices to suit your budget. For an appointment, call Reflections at 226-0175. Yes, okay, well, we were talking about the November 6th uh, elections. There's one issue that's not going to be on the ballot this fall that a group of people hoped would be, and that's legalizing marijuana. With me is Mike McCaney from the uh, Alger County Hemp Coalition. Mike, thanks for joining me. Thank you. We've communicated quite a bit through Facebook and emails, but nice to meet you finally. Uh, you, were, you were trying, you and others, uh, uh, groups uh, trying for the advocacy of legalizing marijuana, tried to get this on the ballot. Uh, you fell short in signatures. Yep, we sure uh, did. You indicated that uh, you learned some things in that process. Yeah, we sure did. We learned that there is a definite difference between going in the voting booth where you're private and no one can look and signing a petition. We assumed because of the 63% turnout that we'd have no problem with this petition, but we didn't realize that a lot of people are afraid to sign a petition. It'll get around. Somebody might see their signature. They could lose their job. Yeah. And that paranoia worked against us. Yeah. There, there are still negative connotations to drug, drug usage, marijuana usage, and legalizing it. So these are all the things you're, you're up against. Let's talk about the, the medical marijuana issue. Uh, in our last election, we did the state of Michigan legalized medical marijuana. Uh, and, and that's an issue that, that you tell me uh, some of our elected officials and appointed officials are trying to chip away at that law. What's going on there? Well, they're uh, constantly doing a, our attorney general seems to be doing a Swiss cheese attack against the law. And one of the main points that they're trying to do is to give up the list, to give up the names of all the growers, caregivers, patients in the area and turn them over to the DEA, which is a violation of the HIPAA Act at the very least. And will definitely bring retaliation on us yeah, and that, all we're trying to do is help the economy out and this guy wants to shut us down that seems to be certainly against the spirit of the law the people of michigan voted for this that you would think that our officials would try to make this work as opposed to ending it certainly yeah. certainly 
Now, now, medical marijuana, you know, it's still not widely accepted as far as, I mean, everybody across the board saying, yes, medical marijuana. Uh, is, is there empirical data and evidence to prove that ma marijuana does affect medical conditions and is a good uh, source of pain relief and recovery and treatment? There are. There are plenty of testimonies that people can find on the Internet, but one of the biggest problems with research in marijuana is because of the federal scheduling, it doesn't allow research on that marijuana. People in Israel have been studying the effects of THC on brain tumors for a long time and have come up with all kinds of data, but oddly enough, you don't see a lot of it published here. Yeah. I, I see a lot of references to treating cancer with marijuana products. Certainly. Tommy Chong just, just went through, I uh, believe it was pancreatic cancer, and fixed it using a substance called Rick Simpson oil, which is basically concentrated marijuana. You, you know, whether, whether that's true or not, right. why not try it, it would be my, my position. You oh, said there's a, there's, a, there's a piece online called Run From The Cure, very instructive piece if people want to watch that. Very, very. And it even shows you how to make Rick Simpson oil yourself. You know, he's the guy that has worked with it for a long time and is willing to give it away. Yeah. And well, let, let me ask you this, Mike. It, it, the other th part of this is, is this just this movement to legalize uh, marijuana for medicinal uses, is this just a smoke screen, pardon the pun, uh, <laughs> to just, just make marijuana legal for recreational use? I, th I think eventually when public opinion changes, yes, it will be allowed for recreational use. I do believe that. I don't want to lie about that. And I really, really quickly, I want to talk about that. One of the things that the Marquette City Police mentioned last time he was on Channel 6 was that there is an issue with recreational users. I agree. I agree. It's just how you deal with it. I actually calculated up, I believe it or not, at one time I was a recreational user before I developed a medical condition. I could spend roughly, just to make the figures easy, $50 a week, which when you add it up, winds up being $2,400 a year. Now you take that times the 133,000 medical card holders in the state, we're up at around 300 million. Now like I said, I believe there's four. For every one medical user, there's four recreational. That's $1.2 billion, and I'm rounding down. Yeah. $1.2 billion that we're letting slide right out of our community that we could be using to help our schools, fix our infrastructure. In other words, taxes on this, Absolutely. On this product. Absolutely. This is money we're throwing away, and worse, mm. we're spending money to do it. Yeah. Take it out of the black market community and make it a legal uh, substance so that it can be taxed and regulated yep. and, and controlled. Uh, let me ask just a basic question about it is why, uh, why, why, do we, why is there such an insistence on making this product illegal when it's something that we can just grow in our backyards and smoke in the comfort of our own homes if we so, so desire? Why is, it, why is so, people so much against it? I think a lot of it is the same concerns that were in 1937 when they were afraid that it was threatening the textile industry and therefore outlawed hemp and cannabis at the same time. I think somewhat the same thing is happening now. Far, some of the people we see donating to anti-marijuana candidates are pharmaceuticals for one and the Michigan Beer and Wine Wholesalers Association and it's they, they know there is something to lose you would not spend that kind of money Colorado lost 10 percent of its alcohol sales when medical marijuana came in there yeah. and they know it <laughs> yeah um, does it lead to other drugs is it a gateway drug it becomes a gateway drug when you take a commonly used substance and put it in the hands of drug dealers if we were to outlaw coffee tomorrow in two weeks, we'd have the same thing. We'd have a lot of us going to our neighborhood dealer looking for a cup of coffee because we know it's harmless. <laughs> yeah, so basically what we're doing is taking a product that people like using and turning them into criminals. But yes, yeah. yep, putting them in jail, ruining their futures. We'll put them on food stamps and welfare the rest of their life yeah. by ruining their, their record. Yeah. You're going to try to get this on the ballot uh, in two years again. You're going to look for signatures, try to for for uh, complete legalization. You bet. We can't give up, and we're working with other groups in the area, like the Coalition for a Safer UP in Escanaba and Michigan Normal. We're going to get it sooner or later. Okay. All it's, right. it's all a matter of winning the public <clears throat> opinion. Well, we'll let the public decide on it. Hopefully, you're able to to do what you need to do to get this done. If medical marijuana is working, I'm all for it. Mike, thanks for what Thank you're doing you for this, and thanks for coming Doug. on. Thank you for the All opportunity. Right. You bet, you bet. All right, stick around. When we come back, a person of interest. Don't go away. Here at Fox Nagani, we want to make your service appointment exceed your expectations. With that, we provide you with these extra services. Free vehicle pickup and delivery and free shuttle service to get you where you need to go. Free car wash with any service. Free loaders with most service work and body shop repairs. 
And when you purchase tires from us, you get free tire rotations for life. Plus, our standard oil change is only $20.95. Fox Nagani, Marquette County's hometown dealer, only the best. City Insurance has you covered. Located on Washington Street, Marquette. The Doug Garrison Show is brought to you in part by Cliffs Natural Resources, a global mining leader with local investment and impact. Cliffs Natural Resources. And by Swick Home Services. Plumbing, heating, cooling, electrical, home generators, water treatment, sewer and drain cleaning, those Swick guys do everything. And by Big Boy. Big Boy serving breakfast, lunch, dinner, and desserts all day. Try their daily breakfast bar and Friday and Saturday night dinner buffets. People of Interest is presented by Canale Tonella Funeral Home. Canale Tonella, family operated since 1893. And we thank Mark Canale for his sponsorship of this segment gives us the opportunity to bring in people who are not only interesting, but are interested in things, which I think is what makes them interesting. Like, for example, our guest, Renee Prusi. Renee, hey, thanks for joining us. Thanks for inviting me. You know, a lot of people know you from your, what you tell me, 30 years at the Mining Journal. 30 years. As a staff writer now, but you've done a little bit of everything there. Certainly. Sports writing, entertainment writing, feature writing. The Bureau. I started in the Ishpeming Bureau back in 1982. Yeah, as a seven-year-old? Oh, I wish. Yeah, okay. No. Great experience, yeah. though. That's just getting off on the ground running and yeah. having to be motivated and keep things going because you're kind of flying solo in a lot yeah. of ways. Yeah, you, you have to do it all. You know, being uh, all this experience that you've had, you've, you've written about so many different things. And I wanted to ask, uh, you know, looking back over those 30 years and some of your feature writing, some of the stories, some of the people that you've met, who, who kind of stands out? Who do you think of more often than others, possibly? Well, if we're talking celebrity, I guess the person I would mention is Ray Nitschke. When I first started Well, out, you're a Packer fan, I'm too. I'm a Packer fan, okay, too. Okay, that's fine. Grew up watching them. Yeah. My brother Eric was a Packer fan. My dad and my brother Alex were Lions fans, so I even the odds, and that's why I became a Packer fan. Oh. But one of the f first couple years I was at the Journal, I got the chance to talk to Ray Nitschke. He was speaking at a chamber event over in Ishpeming. We did a little private interview beforehand. He got up to make his speech, and he was talking, and he said, oh, as I told my new friend Renee Prusi, something, and I thought, oh my gosh, Ray Nitsch, he knows my name. You've been I've, immortalized. I've made it. Where can you go from yeah. here? And then come 25 years later, I'm covering football. We did a section called Armchair Quarterback. Our newspaper did for a yes. while. That was my project. I get sent to Lambeau Field. I get my seat assignment in the press box, and it's seat number 66, which was Ray Nitschke's number. So you talk about your uh, life kind of coming full karma. circle. Yeah. Uh, but I've met so many local people yeah. that have I guess always held my interest in you always kind of keep track of them and how their lives are going from people waiting for heart transplants to people battling diseases to people losing their homes. Yeah. You know, there's so many stories that I've covered through the years and you always kind of have a fondness for the people that are gracious enough to open up and tell you the stories of their lives yeah. when they don't have to. Yeah. You, there's also been good news too. You've co covered a lot of entertainment. You've uh, you've become quite a fan of the music industry, and you've I think you've uh, become a lover of uh, not only some of the local music but a fan of a lot of the local bands. Absolutely, we have a, an enormous amount of talent in Market County in yeah. the Upper Peninsula. It's kind of shocking sometimes when you think about how many good musicians that there are here, and I just wish there were more opportunities to go out and see that. I, yeah. I find it just kind of sad that the venues are drying up yeah. locally. I'm hoping that more venues come out to give these people a chance to perform their craft because they are amazing. Yeah, and, and as we found through this show, there are so many talented people, and uh, maybe as music lovers, we can help support those venues, too. Absolutely. Uh, you know, this is Breast Cancer Awareness Month. One of the reasons I wanted to have you on, you're, you had cancer yourself, not breast cancer, but endometria, uterine cancer, and you're still in the survival mode with that. What, what, what has that experience, how has that affected you? 
Well, I was lucky enough to be able to write about my experience for the paper. I did a series of stories over the course of my treatment called Candid Cancer. To me, that was part of my recovery, being able to write about it, to think that at least maybe I was helping someone else who was starting the journey down the road for cancer treatment. Yeah. Um, I'm three years into remission. You gotta go five before you're considered cancer free. But I really think in some ways it's changed me. I try to be more appreciative of every day of the blessings that I do have in my life, which are many. Yeah. And I, I always feel comfortable if someone who is going through cancer or someone who has someone in their family wants to talk to me, I have no problem if they want to call me. If they see me in the grocery store or at a music venue and they want to talk to me, I'm always open to talking about it. Some people find it to be a daunting subject, but I think we can find such strength in each other, and that's the beautiful thing about living in the Upper Peninsula, the sense of community and the approachableness people have with one another. Yeah, even though we might not be very close geographically, I think we're still kind of close uh, uh, socially and, and, like you say, a part of a community. Absolutely. What, what, do you, what, is, what is in the future for Renee Prusi? What's going to happen in the next few years for, with you? Well, after another 30 years at the Mining <laughs> Journal, <laughs> I think I'm a lifer here. Yeah. I, I love this area. Yeah. I enjoy every day that I go to work. Not to say that I enjoy every single thing that I do because... Everybody has stuff that's not so much fun. Absolutely. That's why it's called work. I feel like I'm blessed. I have so many excellent coworkers. We have a, a range of people on our staff that make us a lively newspaper. And we have, I have bosses that just are really wonderful because they listen to me. They let me bring ideas to them. And that keeps the writing fresh and alive. And yeah. I appreciate that, too. Yeah. Well, there's, uh, you know, the future is always exciting. And whether that's five minutes from now or five years from now, there's always something new coming. And I think you have the kind of attitude that you're, that you're looking forward to, whatever that is. Well, I appreciate that. I always said attitude is everything. Mm -hmm. When I was going through my cancer struggle, you can't control. You have to trust your doctors and the mm -hmm. medical professionals to deal with how you're going to be treated, but how you approach it. Yeah. Not that you don't have bad moments, but you have to try to have the best attitude possible. Yeah. Well, we'll look for that in your, in your articles and columns. We enjoy reading you, and we're, well, I'll you. encourage our, our viewers here to look for that byline Renee Prusi and, and see what that. kind of things you can share with them. Renee, thanks for, so much for being our person Absolutely, of interest Doug. this month. All right, Thank great. You. Thank you very much. Okay, don't go away. We'll be right back with some final thoughts. At Joe's Automotive, we didn't hire a marketing team wanting us to move to a high-cost, easy-to-find location. Nope, we're still inconveniently located across from the municipal power plant, saving money to spend on what is most important, the latest electronic diagnostic equipment and the top certified mechanics. At Joe's Automotive, we didn't need a Washington bailout. Instead, we're offering a stimulus package for you. Take 15% off the cost of labor and 10% off the cost of parts. That's because at Joe's Automotive, we know you want no-hassle quality service at a reasonable price. I'm one. She's not alone. I'm one too. One in eight women will develop breast cancer in their lifetime. For those of us with breast cancer, there is hope. With early detection, 99% of women can be cured. At Bell Hospital, your mammogram is reviewed while you're on site, and follow-up testing can be done the same day. With the latest in breast cancer detection, Bell Hospital is the right choice for the mammogram that matters most. Yours. There are many reasons for pre-planning funerals. Peace of mind. Sparing family difficult decisions. Paying for tomorrow's services at today's prices. But none is more important than making someone's loss a little less empty. Contact Canale Tonella Funeral Home for their free brochure on pre-planning. Okay, I asked you to come back. I'd have some final thoughts. I don't have any. I just want to thank our guests. We had Tom Baldini here from the Marquette City Charter Commission. Of course, Mike McHaney was here from the Alger County Hemp Coalition. And our person of interest was Renee Prusi. I want to thank you for joining us. Remember, see us again next week right here on the Doug Garrison Show. <laughs>